Uh, welcome to Theater 15, everybody. Um, my name's Harry, I'll be your proctor. This was actually originally supposed to be a Rolling Stones reunion concert, but by popular demand, I'm happy to introduce Ivana Alexandra Chili here with the um, session uh, titled Operation, Operation PZ Chow. And I'm gonna hand it off to her, she can take it away. Let's give it a round of applause, folks. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I'm here to say a few words about the research I did recently about a targeted attack that is based on uh, rat components. I hope that at the end of the presentation, you'll find the information useful and you'll better understand the impact of malware. Um, please allow to introduce myself. My name is Ivona. I'm a forensics engineer at B Defender with four years of expertise in the Cyber Threat Intelligence Lab, and I'm also a master's stu student in uh, information security. Who are we? Well, Bdefender is a security product founded in 2001 with almost two decades of security expertise. It also operates a security delivery infrastructure of 500 million of machines in 150 countries. Also, you can find us in most uh, of the top security products that also integrate our technology. And last but not least, we are a community of researchers uh, that are very passionate about machine learning and artificial intelligence. And also our studies are integrated in our technologies. The agenda for today is quite simple. We are going to review some general aspects behind the case. Then we are going to dive into some more technical details. And then we'll close with, with uh, some conclusions. Some quick facts about the case. In uh, July 2017, our threat intelligence systems has detected a number of packed samples disguised as legitimate applications that were flagged as malicious. At the first glance, in our telemetry data, we have found a small number of hosts that were belonging to, to some IP addresses uh, belonging to Asia. But after digging more into our telemetry, we have arrived, arrived at a total number of 10,000 institutions from uh, technology sector, government, education, and telecommunications. Now, uh, we'll take an in-depth look in the attack chain, the infrastructure used by the threat actors, along with the malware subdomains they control, the payloads delivered on the systems, and also some telltale signs that indicate the return of Iron Tiger ABT. The threat actors uh, behind the attack have control over five subdomains that host communication and control servers. Suggestively named, each one um, serves specific functionalities like downloading additional uh, tools, uploading uh, sensitive data, and rat related communication. The initial point of compromise seems to be highly targeted spam messages that lure the target into opening a malicious document that will further download the first stage payload. This download server is one of the malicious servers affiliated and has been resolving to an IP located in South Korea since July 2017, also when the first sample, for, uh, when our threat intelligence systems first encount encountered the first indicator. Starting this year, the domain changed its resolution to another IP, but it's, it is still located in South Korea. As you can see in the diagram below, at each stage of the attack, new samples are downloaded and executed on the system. In the last stage of the attack, once the ghost rat has arrived on the system, the system will be fully controlled and monitorized. We'll see uh, some details regarding these payloads in um, next. So, um, talking about the first stage payloads, the first uh, payload that arrives on the system is a self-extracting 7-zip archive that will drop on, a sys on the system two malicious bad scripts and one legitimate application curl. So, the first script to run will be up bat, and its purpose is to schedule the second bat in order to run as a task under the legitimate name Adobe Flash Updaters. This task disguise is often used by the malware uh, attackers in order to um, avoid detection of the security products. So before uh, setting uh, the task to run, it will make sure that nothing will interfere with the sample and will kill all legitimate Adobe Flash applications and also all legitimate security solutions installed on that system. So um, this newly installed malicious Adobe uh, task has two main functionalities. 
The first one is to download additional companion tools from the download server. And the second one is to upload system information and later sensitive data to the upload server. For the uploading part, it will need a helper bat, which will uh, drop on the system, uh, called 360, mainly because uh, of its resemblance to a highly popular security suit in China. So it will um, upload to the server a fingerprint of the system, consisting of a domain, username, MAC address, and a flag indicating if the RDP port is open. After finishing profiling the victim's device, it will start sending credentials such as passwords. The password achievement is done uh, via an implementation of Mimikatz, which will, which will be downloaded along with the second stage payloads. The um, uploading of the sensitive data is scheduled to run every week at 3 a.m. Um, now let's talk about the second stage payloads and the first payload that is requested from the server is the password stealer application uh, which is Mimikatz. Actually uh, two versions of Mimikatz will be downloaded for both uh, system architectures. Once executed it will dump a file containing all the credentials on the disk and this file will be later uploaded when the scheduled time comes. The second um, uh, payload that is downloaded uh, is a set of Bitcoin, Bitcoin mining tools um, that will run under a legitimate name called Java. Uh, this time uh, they are scheduled to run every three weeks at 3 a.m. The last payload that arrives on the system and the most important one is a slightly uh, modified variant of Ghost Rat that is designed to act as a backdoor implant. Um, once it arrives on the system, it will start beaconing uh, the CNC server. So this ghost thread is composed of two components. The first component represents a dropper, which is a Windows application that uh, contains all the code required to prepare the host for the installation of the actual RAT server. So the actual, actual RAT server is a DLL that will be installed, again, under a, a legitimate uh, name, Oracle, and once installed, it will start communicating with the attacker's endpoint. The attacker's endpoint is also known as the RAT client. So, um, the, uh, the RAT infrastructure is composed of the uh, attacker part, also known as the client, which will control the victims through the server that was previously downloaded and installed on their systems. Um, very interesting is that the ghost architecture takes advantage of the ability to create custom resources and custom binaries. So it is very easy for the attackers to create binaries that will better exploit custom targets. In order to communicate with the CNC servers, it will first search its own binary to find the encrypted, AES actually encrypted, CNC servers. Once it manages to decrypt them, it will perform a handshake with the server by sending a login token along some login data con consisting of OS version, IP address, hostname, and a flag indicating if the webcam is available or not. Once the handshake is performed, uh, it will enter a loop and await for further instructions. Um, the attackers um, usually use this data in order to identify what kind and or maybe what role does the victim has in that specific network of the organization. Um, so after um, uh, establishing this um, handshake, um, it will send some instructions instructing the server what to do. So uh, among the, the capabilities, there are um, the remote shell, keystroke logging, uh, live feed of webcam and microphone, uh, downloading additional binaries, um, and uh, system information such as the list of processes currently running on the system or uh, screenshots of the infected host. This instruction contains an instruction code, and this instruction code can be of two types. There are the commands. This is when the client, also known as the attacker part, will instruct the server what to do next. And also there are the tokens that are used to sync the data between the server and the client, as we have seen uh, with the token login. Now we'll see some similarities with the ghost variants used uh, in attacks associated with Iron Tiger. 
mainly there are the register key name used for persistence. There are uh, some scripts used for process cleanup. This is done because um, they prefer to remove all the traces between infecting a system. Um, also, there are some strings, uh, specific strings are coded for generating the AIS encryption key. The use of specific uh, CNCs that provide a new configuration of the server list, um, they do that uh, in order to evade detection. And also the use of password stealer applications such, uh, such as Mimikatz. Um, while analyzing uh, the download server, we managed to retrieve a list of all the files that were hosted on that server, including some meta information such as last modified time and also the total number of hits that were made upon that sam samples. Um, among the variants uh, we have found, there are several ghost red variants uh, on the server, along with some IP addresses that uh, contain IP addresses of the targeted hosts. And what is more interesting is that once in a while, the attackers reset the IP logs along with a number of hits in order to mark the end of a campaign and the start of a new one. Okay, so um, uh, as, I have, as I said, there are other variants of ghost threat hosted on the server. Um, the behavior is very similar with the one we have analyzed, but the protocol, the communication protocol, uh, differs a little. Um, there is no uh, encryption with AES, uh, but uh, the body of the packet is compressed. These variants were, were also spotted in Iron Tiger attacks. Um, the download server also contains a Python-developed threat that it has functionalities like downloading, uploading, and uh, information gathering. Another category of application um, are uh, the poor scanning tools that come with uh, a set of IP logs that are passed as an argument when um, the tools are uh, executed. So the logs contain um, some subnet ranges, mainly located in Asia, uh, that indicating that um, the attackers prior to an infection will scan the targets for vulnerabilities. So in the end, um, the hosts that will be infected are the ones that are vulnerable. Uh, to sum up, uh, in the end, what is concerning is a significant number of uh, targeted hosts or infected hosts, and what is more concerning is uh, the big number of users that are unaware of this threat, a uh, threat that has very powerful capabilities of espionage and also lateral movement mechanisms. And um, we can point that is a very um, close linkage to this affiliate group, meaning that they will come with more and more campaigns. Okay, so now uh, some takeaways uh, in case you want to check if your system is infected or if your system uh, was a victim of such an attack. You should look into suspicious network traffic, malicious scheduled tasks, uh, suspicious services and processes, or maybe uh, high usage of the CPU. And uh, because in most of our investigations, uh, the attack vector begins with some spam messages, a very important advice would be do not open spam attachments. And also, um, another important advice would be to keep all your installed applications up to date. Because if your applications are not updated, it would be easier for the attackers to infiltrate in your uh, organization. And last but not least, use a security solution that would have multiple layers of protection so that the attacks may be stopped at least at one uh, intermediate um, attack stage. For more indicators of compromise, uh, you may check uh, our BDefender technical blog, um, or if you want to check more of our um, investigations, you can check uh, the white paper section. Also, there are some useful tools in case of a ransomware infection. Uh, more precisely, if, uh, we have for some families uh, decryptor tools that will decrypt your files so you don't need to pay uh, the ransom. Also, we provide a live attack map that registers all the attack that we see in the wild. Uh, also, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Uh, I will be here today and tomorrow, but you can, um, you can contact me through LinkedIn, Twitter, or email. Thank you very much.
Awesome. Thank you very much, Ivana. Um, we're going to, uh, we got a couple questions for you. If we want to hit the audience first, if someone in the audience has a question, I see you there. I'm going to come to you with the microphone to make it easy for you. Here you are. Hey, Ivana. Thanks. Hello. Um, quick update. Do you have any uh, list of the vulnerabilities that would that the uh, malware would deem fit to run on? Like what vulnerabilities would it check for before it uninstalls? Uh, sorry, can you repeat please? What, uh, what system vulnerabilities would it check for before it decides to make that system a victim? It will check for uh, if certain ports are open on that machine so it can infiltrate. Um, a couple of uh, questions came in here off Slido and while I make my way down to you, sir, I can ask you those. Uh, did you evaluate the uh, this file using virus total. If yes, what information was gained through there? Oh, can you repeat, please? Okay. Did you evaluate this file using virus total? If yes, what information was gained through there? Um, if I checked the virus total uh, platform, uh, I couldn't understand. Okay, we'll move on to another question. Uh, does it affect Mac users? Uh, no, it doesn't affect. Hi. Uh, Hi. I'm wondering how did you get the list of all the files on the download server, including all the download counts? Uh, because uh, they use a HTTP server, so that is um, like um, a trick in order to uh, comment. It is a, a oh yes, it is a directory listing. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Do you have any estimates on how large the attack was, like and how profitable it was, how long it's been going? Uh, sorry? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Do you have any estimates of how large the attack got? I can, I didn't understand, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay, um, we, uh, from our telemetry, uh, we think that are over 10,000, but that there are only targets, not, we don't know if the attack succeeded. Any more questions? On my way. Hey, so I was trying to ask the question on virus total. Um, when we analyze malware files, we uh, try to see if the hash is available on virus total. So I was just curious if you uploaded the file or the hash on virus total or if you have any other website that you use to kind of gather more information about the file and when was the first time it was seen, what the community thinks of it. I think after looking at the file, Bitdefender would flag it as a malware on VirusTotal, but what were all the other AVs, uh, what they had to say about this file? Um, these files on VirusTotal were not explicitly uh, detected. Uh, only Bitdefender had a more specific detection. But uh, uh, regarding what you have said first, yeah, we have the files uploaded to virus, virus total, so you can find uh, them there. Also, you can find them um, on the white paper. You're welcome. Were there any other questions? <laughs>